Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast in the Bible, a devotion based on the daily text of the Revised Common Lectionary. I'm Pastor John Paul of Pleasant Valley Lutheran Church in Oliva, Wisconsin. Here at Breakfast in the Bible, we believe that just as you eat breakfast to fuel your body for the day, so too we should start each day with the Bible, with God's Word, to nourish our souls for the day ahead. A quick reminder. In the weekly lectionary, Sunday always stands at the center. And so texts for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday point forward to the coming Sunday. And then the texts for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday reflect back on the previous Sunday. So come along, grab your coffee, grab your breakfast, grab your Bible, and let's get your day started right. This is Breakfast in the Bible. Welcome. Today is Friday, May 15th. Thank you for joining me today in our morning devotion. Yesterday, we heard text a text from the book of Genesis and reflected on the building of the ark. And so today, we're going to continue uh, with that story. We ended at the end of chapter 6, and today we start and we hear actually all of chapter 7 of the book of Genesis. And so, again, remember, as you hear this read, as you read along, as maybe you read these texts for yourselves later on, think about and reflect on what jumps off the page for you, what stands out. And through that, what might God be saying to you today? And what might that mean for your discipleship of Jesus? So here now these words from chapter 7 of the book of Genesis. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters came on the earth. And Noah, with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of birds that are not clean, and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah, went, and Noah's wife and the wives of his three sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind and all domestic animals of every kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. The waters swelled so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters swelled above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep, and all flesh died that moved on the earth. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all human beings. Everything on dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. God blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, human beings and animals and creeping things and birds of the air. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those that were with him in the ark. And the water swelled on the earth for 150 days. The word of the Lord. So what stood out to you? What did you hear 
in this text today. It's a hard text. I mean, I said this yesterday, too. Uh, I, and I don't have great words of wisdom, I don't think, to, to offer you about this text. It's hard. It's challenging. You know, when we think about God, we like to think, and we should, think of Jesus. We think of God as loving and kind and patient and faithful. And then we hear a story like this. For 40 days, rain came on the earth. The waters of the deep opened up and rains poured out of heaven. And every living thing on dry land, everything that had the breath of life, died, including all human beings. It's a really difficult text and a hard way to, to think about God and who God is. And so I think we come back again to faithfulness and God's presence in our lives. As we look towards Sunday, right? I said this yesterday, our Sunday text is about the presence of God continuing with us after Jesus, the presence of God and Jesus Christ with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promises, I will send the advocate, right? The Holy Spirit that continues to connect us and keep us in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And so, although we have this difficult text and this really difficult understanding of who God is in light of the flood and this massive death in the world, we are reminded of God's faithfulness, that God saved Noah and his sons and Noah's wife and his, the, the wives of his sons, and he put them onto the ark, and God preserved two of every living creature on the ark. And what's God going to do? Do you remember? Does God just abandon them to the floodwaters? No, God remains there and present and faithful with them. And the waters subside. And Noah will be given the same charge that is given at creation. Multiply. Fill the earth. Right? Ultimately, the cre the, this flood story is a creation story. Now, I don't want to get too, too deep into some of the language that happens, but the language of Genesis and the, the waters and the deep are echoed here in the story of the flood, the waters and the deep. Those same themes are echoed in another creation story, and it's the creation story called the Enuma Elish. And you can go and you can find that and you can read it if you want. It's a Babylonian text about the creation of the world. And in that, the gods go to bloody war to create the world. And there's these chaotic waters that get formed above and below. And the promise and the story and what the writers of the Bible are trying to tell us is that although those chaotic waters swarm up and fill and seem to cover our lives and threaten our lives, that ultimately God has power over the chaotic waters in your life. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was a formless void, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. God in complete control. And here again in the story of the flood, although the waters rage and foam and, the, and there's massive death throughout the earth, and the animals and the people are crowded onto, the, onto this ark and unsure of what's going to happen. God is always in control. No matter what chaotic waters are filling your life right now, maybe it's related to the pandemic and coronavirus. Maybe it's the, uh, the floodwaters of information that are coming, coming at us in terms of what we should be doing to stay healthy and to stay safe. But maybe it's something else in your life, illness. Difficulty with family, difficulty with our children, our jo in jobs, and our careers. What are the floodwaters that threaten to consume your life? And the promise today, no matter what those things are, God is always in control. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that though the waters rage and foam in our lives, you remain ever present and ever faithful. We give you thanks that in our lives and the chaos we experience each day, you are present there with us. And through the Holy Spirit and the power of Jesus, you guide our lives. Be present with us this day 
as we seek to be disciples for you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I wish you blessings on your day.